I am reading from the book The Greatest Lie on Earth, Proof That Our World Is Not a Moving Globe by Edward Hendry. I'm reading chapter 9 of the third edition of the book entitled No Coriolis Effect Proves a Stationary Earth. One principle of movement on a spinning globe is that the spinning will necessarily produce what is known as a Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect was first postulated by Gustave Gaspard Coriolis, a French engineer, mathematician, and physicist who was born on May 21, 1792 and died on September 19, 1843. The Encyclopedia Britannica states that the Coriolis effect is, quote, an effect of motion on a rotating body of paramount importance to meteorology, ballistics, and oceanography, close quote. The Encyclopedia Britannica further explains the Coriolis effect as it pertains to the supposedly spinning spherical earth. Quote, In 1835, he, Coriolis, published a paper quote, on the equations of relative motion of systems of bodies, close quote, in which he showed that on a rotating surface, in addition to the ordinary effects of motion of a body, there is an inertial force acting on the body at right angles to its direction of motion. This force results in a curved path for a body that would otherwise travel in a straight line. The Coriolis force on Earth determines the general wind directions and is responsible for the rotation of hurricanes and tornadoes. Close quote. The Encyclopedia Britannica provided a graphic to explain the Coriolis effect on the supposedly spinning globular Earth. The graphic is reproduced below. The problem with the above illustration from the Encyclopedia Britannica is that it has no basis in fact. The Coriolis force is very real. If the Earth were in fact a spinning globe, the Coriolis effect would be manifested. The problem is that there is no such Coriolis effect taking place on Earth which means that the Earth is not spinning. The different directions of rotation of hurricanes in northern and southern latitudes has nothing to do with the claimed Coriolis effect of the spinning Earth. Planes that fly north and south do not adjust their flight paths to account for any Coriolis effect. For example, assuming the heliocentric model with the Earth traveling at more than 1,000 miles per hour at the equator, the Coriolis effect would cause a plane flying from Buffalo, New York to Miami, Florida to fly off course in a westerly direction due to the supposed faster spin of the Earth as the plane approaches the wider circumference of the Earth at the latitude of Miami, Florida. Yet, in reality, the flight arrives in Miami on time and without the pilot having to adjust for any Coriolis effect due to the rotation of the Earth. Indeed, if there was a Coriolis effect, it would be nearly impossible to land a plane on a runway. A runway that runs north and south would be careening at approximately 1,000 miles per hour across the path of the plane, which would make it impossible to line up the plane 
for a landing. The Coriolis effect for spinning objects is real. Modern scientists must sell the myth that there is a Coriolis effect manifested on the earth in order to make the spinning earth seem real. The fact that there is no Coriolis effect on the earth creates a real problem for, quote, scientists. Their solution to that little problem is to lie. They claim that there is a Coriolis effect when there is not. The following from the National Geographic is an example of the modern explanation of the Coriolis effect that is supposed to be manifested on Earth, but is, in fact, completely absent. Quote, Let's pretend you're standing at the equator and you want to throw a ball to your friend in the middle of North America. If you throw the ball in a straight line, it will appear to land to the right of your friend because he's moving slower and has not caught up. Now let's pretend you're standing at the North Pole. When you throw the ball to your friend, it will again appear to land to the right of him. But this time, it's because he's moving faster than you are and has moved ahead of the ball. This apparent deflection is the Coriolis effect. Fast-moving objects such as airplanes and rockets are influenced by the Coriolis effect. Pilots must take the Earth's rotation into account when charting flights over long distances. This means most planes are not flown in straight lines, even if the airports are directly across the continent from each other. The line between Portland, Maine and Portland, Oregon, for instance, is very long and fairly straight. However, a plane flying from Portland, Oregon could not fly in a straight line and land in Portland, Maine. Flying east, the Coriolis effect seems to bend to the right in a southerly direction. If the Oregon pilot flew in a straight line, the plane would end up near New York or Pennsylvania. Military aircraft in missile control technology must calculate the Coriolis effect for similar reasons. The target of an air raid could be missed entirely and innocent people and civilian structures could be damaged. The Coriolis force applies to movement on rotating objects. It is determined by the mass of the object and the object's rate of rotation. The Coriolis force is perpendicular to the object's axis. The Earth spins on its axis from west to east. The Coriolis force, therefore, acts in a north-south direction. The Coriolis force is zero at the equator. Though the Coriolis force is useful in mathematical equations, there is actually no physical force involved. Instead, it is just the ground moving at a different speed than an object in the air. Close quote. The National Geographic is just one of many examples of a massive deception. The Earth is supposed to be spinning at approximately 1,000 miles per hour at the equator. Because the circumference of a ball is smaller north and south of the equator, the Earth does not spin at as great a speed at higher and lower latitudes. Portland, Oregon is at 45 degrees north latitude from the equator, and the purported spin of the Earth at that latitude is approximately 700 miles per hour. Portland, Maine is at 44 degrees north latitude, with the spin of the Earth only a tiny bit faster than 700 miles per hour. The Coriolis effect is supposed to put the plane in New York if the pilot simply tried to fly the plane straight 
and level toward Portland, Maine. That is simply not true. The pilot sets his heading toward Portland, Maine and accounts only for wind conditions. The pilot makes no accommodation whatsoever for a Coriolis effect because the earth is not spinning. There is no Coriolis effect to calculate. The National Geographic alleges that, quote, military aircraft and missile control technology must calculate the Coriolis effect, close quote. The National Geographic cites to no authority for its statement for the simple reason that no authority exists. No authority exists because it is not true. The National Geographic is simply making things up to fool the gullible public into believing that the earth is spinning at an incredible speed. The theory of the Coriolis effect in the National Geographic example is that the eastbound plane would be able to keep up with the speed of the allegedly spinning earth because the plane at takeoff would be adding its speed to the 700 mile per hour speed of the runway in Portland, Oregon. The problem with that argument is that it assumes that the runway is lined up due east and the plane is taking off from the runway in a due east direction. The Coriolis effect is supposed to be based upon the spin of the earth and the fact that objects in motion over a spinning earth are moving independent of the spin of the earth once they are in motion. If there truly were a Coriolis effect on Earth, it would pose a real problem for plane flights. If a plane were to take off from an airport in Portland, Oregon, in a north-south runway, and turned east to fly to Portland, Maine, the plane would never make it to Portland, Maine. That is because the plane would be traveling at approximately 560 miles per hour once it reached cruising altitude. The Earth, however, would be spinning at 700 miles per hour eastbound beneath the plane. The plane would never be able to catch up with the speed of the Earth's spin. The plane would be constantly losing distance over the ground at a rate of 140 miles per hour. Essentially, the plane would be moving backwards over the ground. What is found is exactly the opposite. A plane traveling eastbound from Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine would in fact have a shorter flight time than a plane traveling westbound from Portland, Maine to Portland, Oregon. The reason has nothing to do with the spin of the Earth. The high velocity of eastbound winds at high altitude, known as the jet stream, carry the planes along and allow eastbound flights to have a faster ground speed. The jet stream can have wind speeds ranging from 60 miles per hour to over 250 miles per hour. That same jet stream is a hindrance to westbound flights. It was reported in January 2015 that a British Airways Boeing 777-200 jet was able to travel at ground speeds in excess of 745 miles per hour as it traveled in the eastbound jet stream of approximately 250 miles per hour. Incidentally, the speed of sound is 760 miles per hour at sea level. 
David Wardlaw Scott explains experiments done in England at the turn of the 20th century using a cannon which showed that there was no Coriolis effect whatsoever manifested on Earth, thus indicating that the Earth is motionless. In the experiments, a cannon was fixed firmly on the ground in a precisely vertical position. The cannon was fired. The cannonball ascended for 14 seconds vertically, and it took 14 seconds for the cannonball to fall back to earth, for a total of 28 seconds aloft. If the earth were traveling eastward at 600 miles per hour at the latitude in England, the cannonball would be expected to land almost five miles to the west of the cannon. However, that did not happen. The cannonball fell generally within two feet of the cannon. In a couple of instances, the cannonball actually returned to the cannon's mouth. If there was any spin to the earth causing a Coriolis effect, it would have been discovered by now. Yet every single experiment ever performed to detect the motion of the earth has resulted a null result. In other words, the Michelson-Morley experiment. Real-life experiments have proven that there is no Coriolis effect on earth because the earth is stationary. Governmental education systems, however, persist in pushing the myth of a Coriolis effect on a supposedly spinning earth. Indeed, they must argue that there is a Coriolis effect because if they let it be known that there is no Coriolis effect, that would let the cat out of the bag that the earth is stationary. For example, below is an illustration from the Coastal Practice Network, which is funded by the European Union Regional Development Fund. Coastal Practice Network showing their depiction of Coriolis effect of a cannon shot on Earth due to the spin of the Earth. However, no such effect actually happens because the Earth is not a globe and does not spin. Indeed, if there were truly a Coriolis effect on Earth, as depicted in the above illustration, then the artillery officers and snipers would be trained to consider the spin of the Earth in making their calculations for accurate firing. Yet, you will look in vain for any mention of Coriolis effect in any military artillery or sniper instruction manual. In all of the wars fought throughout history, no soldier has ever been instructed to consider the Coriolis effect of a spinning earth when sighting in a target with his artillery piece or other weapon. The folly of adjusting for a mythical Coriolis effect would be immediately apparent as the soldier's round would travel off course and miss the target. This author is a former federal firearms instructor. I have seen many thousands of rounds shot from all kinds of firearms at various distances. I have never witnessed any round fired ever be affected by the alleged Coriolis effect. I have never read the Coriolis effect 
discussed in any firearms manual, nor have I ever heard it to be discussed by any firearms instructor as something to consider in the use of any firearm from any distance. If in the real world those whose lives depend on the accuracy of their performance using weapons do not consider the Coriolis effect, that is convincing evidence that there is no Coriolis effect on Earth. That means that the Earth is not spinning. All of the pretty colored diagrams showing a spinning Earth with cannonballs going off course due to the supposed Coriolis effect depict an unreal myth. The Earth is fixed and does not move. <laughs>